Louisville in the black, just the 12th meeting between these schools all time. Louisville does lead the series, and they've won six of the last seven, but the teams split a pair of games last season, each winning on their home floor. Boston College opens in the man-to-man, -man, and Louisville, they like to take Wara and get Wara involved early, and there's, there's what we're talking about. That's a guy, I mean, that's a tough shot right there, dribbling to his left, coming back, shooting it with his right hand, defender right in his face. There's very little you can do defensively against that. Boston College has had to move a lot of pieces around the chessboard with their starting lineup this season because of several injuries, but now everybody is healthy. And they're trying to turn the corner on their season, sitting at an even 500, 10 and 10 overall. Shot clock at five. In the first offensive possession, Jarius Hamilton hits the first basket for Boston College, coming off a career-high 23-point performance in a victory over Virginia Tech last weekend. And this Louisville lineup, much more stable this season than what we've seen from BC. They've only used two different lineups for the entire year. But they have not been as disrupted by injury. Chris Max, guys, they had their injuries early. Malik Williams and David Johnson missed games early in the season, but they've been gradually working their way back in. And there's Wara on the inbounds play. So Jordan Wara has the first four for Louisville. Second leading score in the ACC. Louisville in that man-to-man -man defense, and of course the basis of their defense is trying to keep you out of the lane. Coming off probably their best defensive performance over the weekend in a victory over Clemson. There is Jim Christian, the head coach for BC in his sixth season. After spending two years as the head coach at Ohio, and was also at Kent State, and spent four years as the head man at TCU. A tremendous fake, and they're going to count the basket. Derek Thornton gets remember, the shot. Remember what we said, that Louisville's defense is based on keeping guys out of the lane, and Kimball falls down there, and as a result, Thornton can get to the basket. That was a goal 10 because they hit the net while the ball was on the rim, but it went in anyway. Yeah, that was Stephen Enoch on the goal 10. Here's Darius Perry shooting and scoring his first basket of the night. Perry coming off a career high, 19 points and five three-pointers in the victory over Clemson this weekend. Now, Perry's a very energetic player. He's always been a bit, pretty good defender. And if he's going to get his offense rolling, Louisville's going to be really tough. Makes them such a dynamic offensive team. As the Cardinals take it away from the Eagles here, Perry leading the charge up the floor. War of the corner three. C.J. Felder the rebound. Felder has started the last 11 games for this BC squad. See, that's exactly what Louisville wants you to do. You don't drive in there. They want you to kick it back out. They reset that defense. Thornton once again driving, but this time it's Dwayne Sutton blocking that one out of bounds. Uh, sometimes you see blocked shots. The guy's way up at the top of his jump to knock it away, but Sutton, he knocks that one away from about shoulder level. <laughs> Sutton such a valuable contributor to this Louisville squad. Plays several different positions. Leads them in steals and rebounds. One of the best energy players on the squad as well as Jay Heath hits the three-point basket. First of the game for BC. Their leading three-point shooter. And BC is not a great three-point shooting team. They shoot under 30% as a team on the year. And Sutton foul as he drives inside. It's exactly what you're talking about with Durain Sutton. This is a guy big and strong and tough, and he just is able to use that strength to get into the lane and get the ball up on the board. And it's Jarius Hamilton with his first personal foul. Just shy of the three-minute mark here in the first half of play. And as Sutton's free throw brings this game even at seven. Now you look at these statistics, Dan, and a lot of mismatches coming into this game in favor of Louisville. What is the path for victory for this BC team? That's very simple, and it's going to sound silly. It's make shots. It's get good shots, get open shots, and in transition, that's the best three probably you're going to get. 
but they're not a good three-point shooting team. I think they've got to make pretty close to double figures tonight from the three-point range. Jay Heath, back-to-back three-point baskets. Darius Perry lights one up, and oh. he connects from downtown. Now again, you can't guard that. Derek Thornton gets his shot blocked by Enoch, but a foul before the shot. It's a really good job by Boston College to push the ball up the court after Louisville has scored. It's very clear that Jim Christian's guys, they want to get down and try to beat that Louisville defense every time they can. So that foul on Fresh Kimball, already his second personal foul here in the opening minutes of this first half. And this is a problem that Boston College had in their last game. Even though they won it, they missed 16 free throws in that game against Virginia Tech. Derek Thornton, leading scorer on this squad, and he is well-traveled. Been to both coasts and back, playing with Duke, USC, now here in Boston. And it's a one-point lead for the Eagles. Obviously, he's the leading scorer, but they're relying on him to do a lot more than just score as BC drops back into the 2-3 zone. Comes inside to Enoch, triple teamed and had it stripped. It's great defense by Jarius Williams, who did nothing more than hold his ground and allow help to come. And I'm telling you what, when Jarius Williams plays with energy and enthusiasm and takes good shots, this Boston College team becomes a much different kind of team. And this is a team that, despite their struggles this season, they typically play well at home against better competition. They elevate their performances. Playing the number six team in the land here on this Wednesday night. C.J. Felder goes glass to score. Boy, that's, I mean, that's great ball movement by Boston College. Chris Mack, he's over there thinking that's a little bit too easy by the Eagles. Three-point lead for the home team. Sutton left open for a three, and Felder has the board. See Boston College trying to push. They are connecting from downtown early. First three for Thornton. And Thornton has only had a couple of games this year where he has made as many as two three-pointers in the game. No, no games this year where he's made more than two. So that's a great start for Boston College. A perfect three of three from three-point range. And the lead is half a dozen. Perry tries to cut into that. And he answers with a three of his own. Well, he has made a couple of tough threes. And Louisville's a very good three-point shooting team. In conference play, in fact, they get 36% of their points from beyond the arc, but I think they've got to get the ball inside. You can't rely on those tough threes. Jay Heath looking for his third three already. Rebound, though, to Stephon Mitchell. Here's Thornton. Okay, and you don't want that three to become fool's gold. They're not a good three-point shooting team, and he just falls down. And a traveling violation called on Perry after the slip. Now both teams shooting it well from the outside. BC and Louisville separated by just three points here early on, first half. Great stat for BC early, but again, you don't want to fall in love with that three. Boston College coming off a critical win for them, beating a solid Virginia Tech team here at the Conti Forum this past weekend, and that snapped a four-game losing streak for the Eagles. Jarius Hamilton hits the jump shot. And Hamilton has been outstanding in his last two games. His shooting percentage is 76%, and he has taken a couple of mid-range shots early in this game, and that's, I think, where he's most effective. And he's also drawn the defensive assignment on Jordan Wara, Although they switch it out now, it's going to be tough for him on David Johnson. But Wara still finds enough space to connect from three. Now, interestingly enough, too, in his last three games, Jordan Wara has struggled shooting the ball, averaging fewer than nine points a game. But he's off to a great start here early. What's interesting about this Louisville squad is they're coming off perhaps their most comprehensive performance of the entire season this last weekend when they beat Clemson by 18 points. It included a 20 to nothing run at one point as Jay Heath scores here for BC. 
But even as thorough a performance as it was, Dan, many of the top Louisville players didn't have their best games, and yet they still won so convincingly. Uh, this is a deep Louisville team. They've got a lot of guys who can score. They've got a lot of guys who can make plays. David Johnson here is one of them. Nice pass. Tip back up. Malik Williams corrals the offensive rebound, but it's swatted away. And then it's Williams who commits the foul on Stephon Mitchell, who had made the nice defensive play to take it away. Wow. That ball was thrown very hard, and I'm surprised Mitchell didn't break a finger on this one because that ball, he swats that ball down. Williams is trying, he never even sees that hand, and Mitchell, one of the top steals guys for Boston College, he just makes plays like that. Does a little bit of everything. Stephon Mitchell's not a great shooter, but he's an outstanding rebounder. He's an outstanding defender. Leads this team in steals, rebounds, blocks, and is second in the conference in steals overall as he takes a seat on the bench now. Boston College defense does a nice job creating turnovers. Thornton into Popovich, who scores for the first time tonight. Popovich is pretty crafty on the inside. He gets good position, catches it well, can use either hand, and that's just a great job by Thornton to get him inside. Ryan McMahon, three-point sharpshooter coming off the bench, missing everything with his first attempt. McMahon right. was in the starting lineup earlier this season, but his starting minutes starting to fluctuate. His minutes are down a little bit because of the emergence of David Johnson, but he and Johnson are in the game playing together right now. And McMahon, even though he missed that one, he is an outstanding three-point shooter. You cannot give him very much room. Louisville oftentimes will go with the guard combination of Johnson as well as McMahon and then Perry and Kimball as Boston College has kept the foot on the gas from three-point range. Now four of six from beyond the arc. That is Thornton's second three-point basket, only the fourth time this year that he has scored as many as two three-point baskets in a game. Crowd really into it now. Boston College off to a hot start. Jordan Wara scoping out a three, and he buries it. That was some pass. My goodness, was that a great pass. And that's David Johnson. And look, Louisville folks are very excited about the type of plays David Johnson sees, mainly because of the way he sees the court. And that was a perfect example right there, finding Jordan Wara all the way on the other side. Wara has two three-point baskets. Certainly affected that shot from Jared Hamilton, the brother of Jarius. Wara never got a piece, but he altered the shot enough to make a difference. Here's Jared Hamilton on the rebound. Dropping south of 11 minutes. Now left to go first half. What a scorcher it's been here on the campus of Boston College. Popovich rotating, coming up short. That's a nice job by Malik Williams to just move his feet and make the play tough. Oh a scoop and score and a three-point opportunity coming up. David Johnson. The sensational freshman, the native of Louisville, coming off the bench and scoring once more. With this time left in the first half, we're not halfway through the first half, and you can see the combined numbers for those teams. I mean, Steve, 25 to 21, that's a halftime score in, in a Virginia game, but <laughs> we've still got more than half of the first half left. Both teams lighting it up from the perimeter so far. So paramount for this Boston College team. They live and die with the outside shot. Louisville has so many different ways to hurt you offensively as Johnson completes the three-point play coming out of the timeout to make it a three-point game approaching the midpoint of our opening half of play. Well, what a luxury it is for Louisville. You lose your starting point guard with a couple of fouls, and David Johnson comes off the bench, and in six minutes, he's got three points. He's got a couple of rebounds. He's got two assists. And Popovich, that's a shot he needs to make. I think he lost control of the ball, driving it to the basket. I think he surprised Malik Williams. Ryan McMahon lost the handle, and then he immediately fouls Julian Rishway. Well, next Saturday at noon Eastern right here on ACCN, we've got the Sunshine State rivalry game between Miami and fifth-ranked Florida State. 
The Seminoles have won four straight against the Hurricanes each of the last three seasons overall. It's the second matchup this season between those two squads, and that's coming up this weekend here on ACCN. Rebound to Malik Williams. David Johnson. And it poked away by Rish Wayne. Last touch by Johnson, so it goes over to the Eagles. Now, Dan, when Boston College beat Louisville here on this floor last year, that was a victory that was accomplished in large part because of their defense. Neither team shot the ball particularly well last year. But the Eagles really locked things down on the defensive end. Well, we've got some confusion here because the guys over at the scorer's table, they sounded the horn when the ball was in play and the players were confused. And so the officials stopped the game and, and allowed Felder to come in. But the play really should have continued there. So they restart. Louisville shot the ball very poorly last year. and Boston College had a pretty good shooting night, and I think that's the formula for Boston College. Rich Wayne, he's got a good touch. But that was good defense. Uh, McMahon didn't let him get into the lane. That was a hard shot. They feed it into Enoch, and he scores. And that's why I think Louisville has an advantage. A very nice job by Enoch to work hard for position and one of the keys, you've got to find a big guy inside at the exact moment he is open, because he's not going to be open for long, and McMahon did exactly that. Head coach Chris Mack of Louisville told us earlier today they want to keep feeding Enoch in the paint. They've definitely got a decided advantage well, inside. That, that's a great job by Ward to prevent Heath from getting into the lane. And if you limit Boston College to perimeter jump shots, again, they're not a great shooting team, much to the advantage of Louisville. Chance for the Cardinals to take the lead. War up, and he's fouled, and he'll have three free throws coming up. This goes to show you one of the reasons why War is such a good player. Preseason All-ACC Player of the Year. He just feels the foul coming, and he gets the shot off. You know, Hamilton was right there, but War felt him there and knew that he would get jump into him if he went up for the shot. Jared Hamilton on that foul. As Warren now settles in at the free throw line. Second to the conference in scoring. And just check out some of the impressive credentials for the preseason conference player of the year. And a couple of substitutions for both teams now. And his offense doesn't even begin to describe his value to this Louisville team. We mentioned he struggled with his offense over the last three games but he continues to be a solid performer on the defensive end. He rebounds the basketball. He has found ways to contribute to Louisville when he's not scoring, but he's got 12 points tonight, so he's contributing on the offensive end, certainly. Leading all scores at this stage of the opening half. Jarius Hamilton against Sam Williamson oh. makes a tough shot. Huh. That was some play. Jarius Hamilton playing with an awful lot of confidence and efficiency. BC back in front. Ryan McMahon, the floater. Moff Glasson in. Lead going back and forth the last few minutes. Stephon Mitchell had an open look at a three, and Felder with the follow. Well, I'm telling you, Mitchell is not a good three-point shooter, so when he's going up for a shot, if you're Louisville, you've got to be blocking out, and Enoch just didn't. Wara, this time trying to get inside the paint, and he draws the foul. A good one here in Boston, Massachusetts. BC by one. And one of the reasons why Louisville and Duke are both in the top 20 in both offensive efficiency and defensive efficiency, Duke, in fact, in the top 10 in both of those. And when you can combine really good offense with really good defense, look at Baylor, the number one team in the country, you know, Louisville number six, Kansas number three. That's why you're a really good team, because you combine both ends of the floor. Does Louisville have a distinct weakness at this point, do you think, Dan? Well, I think Louisville turns it over a little too much, and I think that they have been inconsistent with their outside shooting. 
Not Jordan Warren tonight, though. But they've got a lot of guys who can make plays, and I think this is a Louisville team that is still developing. They are not the team that they're going to be at the end of the season. They've got a lot of room for growth, and they're showing that. Sirius Hamilton, the miss, tracks down his own rebound, sizes up another three, and a foul on the Cardinals. We're talking about the Louisville Cardinals, and, you know, they're 17-3, and three, uh, lead the ACC, 12th in the net, and uh, our Joe Lenardi says they're a number two seed. Of course, now, I have to add that uh, there's nobody in the NCAA tournament yet, and there's nobody out of the NCAA tournament yet. We're still at the end of January, but it's certainly fun to talk about the NCAA tournament. In fact, we've been talking about it since November. Here's Fresh Kimball, who went out early after he started this game because he picked up two quick fouls. But now returning with just under seven oh, to go heaven. in the first half. And this is a Jordan Warren night here in the Northeast. Already his fourth three-point basket. He's got 18 points, and we have over six minutes to go first half. And Boston College is suddenly in a situation where they desperately need a basket. They started 10 of 13 from the field. And they've gone two of ten since. C.J. Felder can't connect from the outside. Stephon Mitchell the rebound. Felder this time trying to take it inside. Oh! Now Felder is not a three-point shooter. Only shoots 26% from out there, but he is the guy who can maneuver inside, as he just showed you. And he just commits the foul on Malik Williams as well. Well, we've got our next women's basketball doubleheader tomorrow at 6 Eastern. Miami hosts Georgia Tech and Coral Gables. Then it's Virginia Tech facing Syracuse at the Carrier Dome. Both games are right here on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. Second personal foul for C.J. Felder. With six minutes to go, first half. The lead is three for Louisville and Wara. You know, they're really going to have to guard him. You think? <laughs> Jordan Wara, 21 points with six minutes still to go, first half. When I told Kate the news that she could get all the stuff she buys most priced low at Food Lion, she let all the parents know that these low prices weren't a one-day thing, more like an everyday thing. Then Mrs. Edwards realized if she combined those with Food Lion's weekly hot sales, she'd always have plenty to go around. We have savings worth sharing with all our neighbors because this is our home, and that's our Food Lion. Somebody hide the weak of heart. Jordan Wara on a tear offensively in this first half. Seven of eight from the field, five of six from three-point range. This, this is the one of the reasons that he's so dangerous. He's capable of doing this kind of thing. When he gets rolling, he's tough to stop. He's got 21 points. The rest of the Louisville team combined has 16. Popovich drawing the foul as he tried to muscle that one up. Obviously, Louisville has played very well on the offensive end, but I think the key to their getting this six-point lead is they've tightened up on the defensive end. Boston College has not been able to get those easy shots close to the basket. Everything's contested. Now, this is a foul, and Popovich is going to the line, but Boston College just has not been able to get close for the last few minutes. Nick Popovich, his third game back after missing nine contests because of a back injury. A senior from Bosnia and Herzegovina. He went to prep school in Florida. He has also played for the Serbian national team. He gives them more of an inside presence than they have when he is out. And really the only way to play through the post that they have available on their roster. Lead is five with five and a half to go first half for Louisville. That's just a really good job by Louisville to push the ball up the court. And Darius Perry, recognizing that he's got a bigger guy on him, takes the ball to the basket against Jarius Hamilton, who picks up his second personal foul. 
So Hamilton's going to come out. You've got Hamilton and Felder each with two personal fouls now on Boston College. And that's two of their inside guys. And it's interesting that Louisville hasn't really thrown the ball to their post guys that much, but they've created foul situations by driving the ball to the basket. So Perry at the free throw line for the first time here tonight. And that win over Clemson when he had the career high of 19 points. Head coach Chris Mack said that was the best game that Perry has played since he's been coaching him. And Perry is an interesting guy. As quick as he is, he doesn't really get to the free throw line very much. Those were only free throw attempts number 11 and 12 on the season for Darius Perry. Oh, boy. Mitchell was open inside. Popovich missed it. He was looking for the handoff on the perimeter instead. Again, big guys, when they're open inside, they're not open for very long. You've got to find them. Jay Heath with a deep three for Boston College, and they needed that. His third triple of this first frame. Darius Perry, marching three. Popovich pulls it away. Nice job by Popovich to pop back up after he didn't get that charge call and get the rebound. Thornton driving on the reverse. Remember what we just said? Boston College hadn't been able to get it all the way to the goal. Well, that time Thornton did. Stephen Enoch now getting set to check back in for Louisville. Four and a half to go. Opening half and a two-point lead for the visitors. Nice response by Boston College. Just what it looked like Louisville might pull away. Fresh Kimball just lost it. Jared Hamilton. Kimball trying to take it all the way. Mitchell, though, stripped it. And that's Later. what Mitchell does. Leader on steals for this Boston College squad. Louisville now with seven turnovers here in this opening half. Popovich, the basket and one. What an entertaining opening half of play. Popovich coming back from injury. And we are tied at 39. Outstanding job finding him when he's open. And he does a great job being ready to shoot as soon as he catches the ball. And if you're going to give him that much room, you're just not going to be able to recover. Look at that. He's made five of the team's seven threes. He scored 21. There are 39 points in those five threes. As you see right there, a career high for Jordan Moore. And we still have almost four minutes left to go in the first half. He could get 50. It's remarkable. Last year, in the win over Boston College back in Louisville, Jordan Wara had a career-high 32 points over the Eagles, and he's on pace to exceed that here tonight on the road against BC. Popovich at the free throw line. And with all that being said, Boston College leads in the game. And Nick Popovich, who just completed that three-point play, as we went to break, he was having some problems over on the bench. So he completes the three-point play, and he goes and sits down for a rest. Remember, he has not played or practiced very much, so he's probably going to have a tough time getting his win. Pass to Enoch just over his head. One of the things that you have to do if you're Boston College, if Louisville telegraphs the inside pass like that, you got to come and help. And Thornton certainly did. Checking on the photographers there because he landed right on top of him. That's a great play, and he almost recovered the ball. Laura guarded by Jared Hamilton. Johnson into Enoch. I think they're going to get Enoch for an elbowing foul. Now, Luka Kraljevic is in the game for Boston College, and he really doesn't play a lot of minutes, but with the foul trouble, and Popovich needing a little bit of blow, Kraljevic comes back in, and he just did a great job inside battling against Steven Enoch. And what the officials are gonna do and look and see if there was a flagrant foul here. That elbow comes around, and he didn't hit him in the face with the elbow. That was a forearm. What did you think? You know, I, I, the guys, they're going to mix it up on the inside. I didn't think that there was anything. You know, the problem you have to look at it, it's above the shoulders. On the inside, and the 
middle portion of your screen. You can see that elbow just there. Krajovic checking to see that he's got all his teeth. Watch the right arm, the left arm of Krajovic, the right arm of Enoch. Enoch's coming around, hits him actually with the wrist. Because the contact was to the face, the officials may rule this a flagrant one. Remember, the flagrant one is contact that is necessary and or excessive and or unnecessary. And that's the debate here. Is that or is that not a flagrant foul? It's certainly a common foul. Well, again, the directive at the beginning of the season to reduce physicality in the game. So the officials have been mindful all season long. Well, he swung that arm around, and certainly if they called it a flagrant foul, they would be well within their rights to do so. Now we'll find out whether they did or not. So about to get the official word. Now you see the exact terminology for a flagrant one as defined by the NCAA. Well, and what they said was they looked at it, and uh, after review, they decided the contact was excessive. And that's, that, that, that's the point there, and that's the first one. There's no question about playing the ball or holding from behind. It, they were battling for position in the post. They deemed that contact to be excessive. And so it's upgraded from a common foul to a flagrant foul. Krajovic will get two shots, and Boston College will get the ball. The junior from Slovenia, who has played on the Slovenian youth national teams, most recently at the European Championships. His dad also played for the Slovenian national team. Came over to the U.S. and Luca played one year of prep ball at Don Bosco before coming to Boston College. Now, any any minutes, any positive minutes they can get from Luka Krajovic will be a bonus for Boston College because, again, he doesn't play a lot of minutes. And remember, Felder and Hamilton, each with two personal fouls for Boston College with three and a half left to go first half. And Popovich still appears to be struggling a little bit over on the BC bench. He looks uncomfortable. Jared Hamilton sizes up a three and it rims out. David Johnson saw an opening, got his own rebound, and he was fouled on the putback attempt. That's a really good play by Hamilton because if he can make Kraljevic defend him and get the ball up to the board, then Malik Williams is in a great position for the offensive rebound, which he was, but Williams was never able to get to it because Johnson got to it first. There's Popovich sitting on the bench. Remember, he's had back problems. And the way he's sitting and walking around over there, his, you know, he may have tweaked something in that back. And those back injuries just don't heal like an ankle or a foot or something like that. Sometimes they linger. It's easy to re-aggravate them. So they have to be careful here. This is just his third game back after missing nine. And during that nine game absence, he wasn't really practicing, so he cannot be in game shape. Just inside of three minutes left to go, first half. One point lead for the Eagles. What has surprised you the most so far in this first half, Dan? Well, of course, Boston College has shot the ball very well. And they're not a great shooting team, but their defense has been solid, and that's not a surprise. They create a lot of turnovers. Derek Thornton. He started to cool off somewhat after the hot start for the team's leading shooter from the field. Corner three. And Sutton out of nowhere. He had the hot start, kind of disappeared, but Dwayne Sutton comes back with his first three-point basket of the game. I'm really impressed with David Johnson. He sees the court. Kaljevic couldn't handle that one. Williamson leads the break. Sutton taking it inside and drawing the fall as he went around Jay Heath. Now coming up, it's the State Farm Halftime Report. As we'll take a look at the pictures and the numbers from our first 20 here at Boston College. Also have highlights from the earlier game, Wake Forest and Notre Dame. 
and some big ACC wins yesterday in the conference. That's all coming up in the next 202 with Dwayne Sutton now at the free throw line for Louisville. That Wake Notre Dame game was a high scoring affair. Notre Dame got 90. It's hard to beat a team when they score 90. <laughs> well, Popovich now, Dan, checking back in after a little spell on the bench. Well, again, he's, it's going to take him a few games to get his conditioning where they want it to be. And they, they really need him because Louisville's now on a little spurt, and Boston College has played so well in the first half. You don't want to have Louisville go on an 8-0 run or something like that right at the end of the half. And Louisville does that very well. They like to go on those runs, and they're effective with it. Jay Heath misses from three. Rebound tipped around. And it's going to be a fall against the Eagles. Louisville went on a 20 to nothing run in their last game, a victory over Clemson this past weekend. And that ball is on Popovich. It'll be his second personal. So that's three different Boston College players with two personal fouls here in this first half. Well, in 20 games, in the previous 20 games, Louisville has gone on 37 runs of 8-0 or more. So they're very capable, and Boston College wants to avoid that particularly given how well they've played in the first half. They don't want Louisville to stretch out this lead. Malik Williams at the free throw line for the first time tonight. The junior from Fort Wayne, Indiana. Well, Friday at 9 p.m. Eastern, we've got the next Bald Men on Campus, our weekend studio basketball show where we preview the weekend's ACC slate of games with Jay Billis, LaFonso Ellis, and Seth Greenberg. So the Bald Men on Campus show upcoming i'm waiting for the mullet men or the ponytails or something Tell a little hair. more juicy with the hair yeah why did the bald men get all the fun a minute and a half left to go first half four point lead for louisville thornton for popovich and just a little too far for the big man See, if you're Boston College, you can't force things. And, you know, people talk about defensive pressure. Well, what Louisville is doing to Boston College here at the end of this half is they are applying offensive pressure. They're coming down and scoring. And the guys from Boston College, they think, well, we got to score to keep up. And so you try to make plays you're really not capable of making. Neither team using much shot clock at all here in this first half. There's a steal by Jared Hamilton, and he's going to get fouled by David Johnson. You know, we talked about Louisville's defensive efficiency numbers, but Boston College, if you look at their numbers, they do a really nice job creating turnovers, stealing the ball, and that time Jared Hamilton just couldn't get it under control to beat Johnson down the court, but he's going to get a chance at the free throw line. Now, Gerald Hamilton has yeah, certainly been around, a senior from Charlotte, North Carolina, transferred from Georgia Southern after spending his freshman year at Jacksonville State, and this after going to four different high schools over his four years of high school eligibility. He was one of the walking wounded earlier this season, dealing with an Achilles injury. Those were big free throws. Now Boston College got to dig in again, get another stop. Under a minute, first half. Jordan Wara. Long three, tip back up by Johnson. Looked like he was going to try for the tip dunk and couldn't control the ball. Chance to tie or take the lead with this three. That's Popovich a, is short. That's a bad shot. He's uh, he's one for eight shooting threes this year. That you got to pass that one up. That's early in the shot clock, and if it's Heath or somebody in transition, I'm fine with that. But not a guy who shoots the three so poorly. About a five second differential, shot clock to game clock here, and another turnover by Louisville in consecutive possessions. And right, they're going to try to hold it for one shot. Really good defensive job by Boston College. This to tie. The rebound to Malik Williams. And Louisville will take a two-point lead to the locker room at the break. 
An entertaining first half here in Chestnut Hill. Jordan Wara leading all scores with 21. And it's Louisville 45, BC 43. The 43 points for Boston College, the most they have scored in any half this season. And for Chris Mack, his Louisville Cardinals trying to extend this six game winning streak that matches the longest they have ever had since they joined the ACC. That's amazing, BC, the most they've scored in a half this year, and they're still behind by two because Louisville is a very potent offensive team. Jarius Hamilton quickly picking up his third personal foul. Well, Boston College obviously talked in the, at halftime about how they need to get the ball inside, and Hamilton got called for a foul battling for position in there. Fresh Kimball had it blocked by Thornton. Out of bounds over to the Eagles. So Boston College is now going to begin the second half with three different players who have two personal fouls, and Jarius Hamilton with three their hottest offensive player. That's something to keep an eye on as this second half unfolds. Hamilton had a good first half when he was in. He was three of five shooting. Stefan Mitchell looks for separation from Enoch, and Wara has the rebound for Louisville. And if you're the Boston College big guys, they've all got two fouls. You've got to be careful battling for position. Don't want to get an over-the-back foul for your third. Sutton going up against Thornton, and he draws the foul on Derek Thornton. And that's just his first. Such a, Sutton is such a versatile guy. We've seen him, you know, make threes in the first half. He can defend any position on the court. He's a very good shooter, but when he needs to, he can put the ball down and use his size and strength to get to the goal. At 14 points and 10 rebounds in the win over Boston College last year back in Louisville. Leading this team in steals and rebounds. Fourth in the conference in rebounds altogether. And that's a 6'5 guy. 6'5, 220. He just has a really good instinct for the ball. Knows where it's going and knows how to go get it. The intensity and the energy he brings is also quite noticeable for the Cardinals as well. Just over a minute gone by, and the lead is now four for Louisville. Thornton shooting over Kimball. And a pair of free throws coming up for the leading scorer on this BC team. And for Fresh Kimball, and that's his third personal. And I think Derek Thornton has done a really nice job being under control tonight. He does have two turnovers, but for the most part, he has done a nice job setting up his teammates, and that time he got into the lane, not, not settling for the three-point shot. He's made a couple of threes in this game already, so the defense pushing out on him, and he's able to get by and make plays in the lane. Leading this team in made free throws this season, connects on both there. Graduate student from Los Angeles. Played at fresh, his freshman year of high school at Sierra Canyon. That's the School of LeBron James' son, Bronny. Getting a lot of national attention right now. Wara, double teamed. Mitchell tried to take it away, but he's going to be called for the foul instead. Mitchell was just a step late. If Mitchell gets there while Wara is still dribbling the ball, and that's what he was trying to do. Mitchell goes right now and Wara picks it up, and it's going to be very difficult to make that steal once Wara picks it up. The referees normally don't let you take it from a guy who has the ball in his hands, particularly when you cross his forearms like that. Two fouls on Stefan Mitchell. Wide open Dwayne Sutton, and Wara the offensive rebound. Quickly going back up has another crack at it and finally scores. For Jordan Warup, believe it or not, just his first point since six minutes left in the first half, and now he's got 23 for the game overall. Well, you know full well that if you're gonna get all those points in the first 14 minutes of the half, you're gonna draw the other team's attention. And that has been the case, and the foul here against the Cardinals. Darius Perry with his second personal. This is something that Boston College has been able to do, and that is get into the lane. 
You surprised that they've been able to do that? Well, they're trying really hard to do it, and Louisville most of the time cuts that off pretty well. So, yeah, it's a little bit of a surprise that they can do this against Louisville. Jay Heath at the free throw line as Nick Popovich is back in. But again, when you start the game as Boston College did, shooting the three so effectively, the defense tends to push out on you a little harder, particularly Heath, who knocked down a couple of long threes, and that creates an opportunity for you to drive past your defender and get into the lane. Heath, three of five from three-point range in that first half of play. Coaching staff calls him the barometer of this team. When he gets going, the team typically does well. Comes into this game tied for third among freshmen in the conference in scoring. Haven't heard from Darius Perry in a while offensively either for Louisville. Scramble on the floor. Louisville recovers. Yeah, that was great anticipation from Mitchell. There is Perry right here. Finds an open, fresh Kimball. And the rebound by Stephen Enoch, who climbed high to put it back. Well, Enoch was able to climb high to put it back because Nick Popovich came running out at Fresh Kimball, and nobody inside blocked out Enoch. And Thornton is shaken up for Boston College. But just, uh, nobody anywhere in the neighborhood for Enoch, and he just steps right to the basket. That's what you do. The big guy, go to the basket. That's just four points for Stephen Enoch, who last year on this very floor had a career-high 22 points in the Louisville loss to the Eagles. Well, Wara has done most of the damage, obviously, for Louisville, and it has been from the perimeter. Just over three going by, second half. Popovich has it pop out. Popovich can shoot that facing jumper, but I'm not sure that that's the play they were looking for. Enoch did a nice job forcing Popovich out, not letting him close to the basket. David Johnson spinning in the lane. Jordan Wara wide open for a three. Johnson inside. Jim Christian's calling a timeout. Louisville just wearing Boston College out on the offensive boards here early in the half. Off the war a miss, David Johnson with the follow, and the lead growing for the Cardinals on the road. Of North Carolina were a bit exaggerated. They've, their guys have put it together for two straight games, including a road win at NC State. It'll be very interesting to see what effect Cole Anthony has on that team when he does come back. No word yet on when that will be. You had to figure that UNC would get it together at some point. They just could not continue on the same trajectory. Still a lot of talent down in Chapel Hill. Oh, what a great tip. That is Jared Hamilton, the brother of Jarius Hamilton, on the putback. Now, Louisville has really been able to get the ball inside in the second half. They've got three baskets. All three of them are off second chances and on the interior. They have five offensive rebounds already in this half. And there, there's another one scored in the lane. They're getting the ball inside, something they did not do in the first half. They already have more points in the paint in this half than they did in the entire first half. That was Dwayne Sutton for Louisville. And a turnover by Boston College. Jordan Wara on the finish. Something BC has not done a lot of tonight, turn the ball over. Well, they only had three in the first half. They've already got two in this half. And Louisville playing a little bit of zone that has Boston College flummoxed at the moment. Popovich taking it up and drawing the foul. He'll head to the free throw line for a pair. Jordan Wara, first points off a turnover for the Cardinals tonight as Jordan Wara continues to lead all scores here in Boston. Welcome back to Boston College where Louisville's stretching out the lead and mainly because they've been able to score inside. All five of their field goals in this half have been taking the ball inside. Jordan Wara, we just saw that last dunk off a turnover that they have really ramped up the pressure in terms of getting the ball into the interior. They've got, again, they've got five offensive rebounds in this half. Eight point margin, largest lead of the night for Louisville as well. And 
Boston College, for the most part, has done a nice job hanging in the game, but they did not give up those second chance points in the first half. They didn't turn it over in the first half. And even though their shooting numbers tailed off in the first half, they were able to stay in the game. Well, they're not shooting the ball well now, and they're turning it over, giving up offensive rebounds. That is not a good formula. It's an illustration of just how small the margin for error is against this Louisville team as that goes off David Johnson and out. Well, we talked in the first half about Louisville's ability to apply offensive pressure. They can come down with so many different weapons, and they can make you feel like every time you get the ball, okay, I got to score because they're going to score. Best defense is a good offense. In this particular case, yes. And I think this zone has, Boston, has bothered Boston College as well. Shot clock in single digits for one of the rare times tonight. Popovich hands it off to Heath. Two to shoot. Launches the corner three oh. and buries it. Well, nothing wrong with that defense. That's just a great shot. And one of the reasons Louisville went to the zone was to prevent the dribble penetration that Boston College was getting. Fourth triple for Jay Heath, the wow. leading three-point shooter on this BC squad. And now you got to get a couple of stops. That was an amazing shot, desperately needed. Johnson runs into Popovich. And it's going to be Popovich with his third personal. He, he, Jordan Gore is right on him, and he steps back. He's nearly fallen out of bounds. The Boston College bench is certainly happy about it. Chris Mack did not have quite the same reaction. So Popovich comes out with those three personal fouls now. now he just got his arms tangled up. Oh, my goodness. Jordan Awara. That is Once such again, a smooth stroke. And he doesn't waste any time, does he? He gets it and it's gone. Now 28 points as he continues to pace all scores. Six of nine from three point range for Wara. Jarius Hamilton trying to answer and tip back up and in by Stefan Mitchell. Uh, Mitchell's the second leading rebounder in the ACC and lots of times. If you're a man-to-man -man team and you start playing zone, the blockout responsibilities are a little bit harder. Nobody blocked out Mitchell. Mitchell with just his first basket of the game. Seven minutes deep, second half. And the lead is half a dozen. Sam Williamson doesn't get the first shot, but tipped up it in by Stephen Enoch. Another offensive rebound, and the problem is when for Boston College, when somebody's able to penetrate into the lane like that, the defense has to come and help, and that makes blocking somebody out very hard. That was a good maneuver by Burt Smith over there to duck him, so the ball went right over his head. Some agility, huh? Uh-huh. Well, Lake Williams coming back into the game here for Louisville. And boss, our Louisville now goes back to the man-to-man. -man. Jay Heath. Missing on the three. That was a tough shot. Jordan Wara, another long three. And he just can't miss. They are so good in transition. And we haven't seen him in transition that much today. 31 points for Jordan Wara, a career-high seven three-point baskets. He is torching the Eagle points here tonight after a 32-point performance in a victory over BC a year ago in Louisville. And he's doing it in front of the Boston Celtics' Danny Ainge, who is sitting front row here at the Conti Forum. Ainge probably wanting to say, Hey, Jordan, if you want to hang around for a few days, we've got Golden State at the Garden tomorrow, and then we've got the Sixers on Saturday. There's Damian Lee, former Louisville guard and current member of the Golden State Warriors. He'll be in action against the Celtics tomorrow night here in Boston, too. And a BC turnover. David Johnson floating it ahead at the side of the backboard. Jarius Hamilton in transition with speed. A little overly optimistic by David Johnson on one end, and that allows BC to get out and score. And Chris Mack just told his freshman point guard, hey, slow down. 
Largest lead of the game, 11 points for Louisville. Sam Williamson misses on the three. And that's a foul on the Eagles. Stephon Mitchell. Well, he is trying to block out David Johnson, and David Johnson has five offensive rebounds in this game. So he does a great job getting position, and Thornton just backs into him. Here's Sam Williamson, who's still trying to get on the scoreboard here tonight after he had his best game of the season against Clemson this past weekend. Had 14 points off the bench in the win over the Tigers. Shot clock at five here for the Cardinals. And a traveling violation. Uh, a little too much dribble in that time by David Johnson, and he lost the basketball. It's nice defense by Thornton. That's really good pressure on the ball. And, you know, one of the things David Johnson will learn is Sutton comes back in along with Kimball and Perry. One of the things that David Johnson will learn is some guy's crawling up on you like that, pass the ball to somebody yeah. else. <laughs> make an easy play. Don't try to make a difficult play. Seven minutes left to go here in regulation. Hamilton lost it. Really good defense by Wara. Inside to Malik Williams. Can't finish with the left hand. He's more of a defensive presence than he is an offensive threat. And Hamilton has it blocked by Williams right there. Wara for Perry. And Darius Perry lays it in. What a great job by Malik Williams to run down the court after he missed that shot. He just turned and went to play defense. And the result is an easy basket for Louisville. Missed the first eight weeks of the season. Had a screw inserted in his right foot. Took him a long time to come back. Darius Hamilton sizing up the three. Mitchell on the rebound, and he's fouled with the basket. We talked about Stephon Mitchell and his prowess as an offensive rebounder. He just does a great job getting position, battling inside against Malik Williams. Williams tries to block him out, but he fakes to Williams' left and then goes back to the right. Williams just not fast enough to catch him. That is three personal fouls on Malik Williams. You know, Williams felt him on one side, and Mitchell was able to get to the other side. And that's the third personal on C.J. Felder. And that's a tough play, but Felder, you know, he's got to be aggressive, a little overly aggressive right there, but Felder's not a guy who's going to make threes. So he's got to be able to rebound the ball and score inside. So you've got C.J. Felder and Jarius Hamilton, each with three personal fouls for Boston College now at the halfway point of our second half of play. Darius Perry can't get the bounce, and the fouls on B.C. on the rebound. While Stephon Mitchell went out and double-teamed, trying to put pressure on the ball, and that left Heath on the inside. You can see right in the middle of your screen trying to block out Malik Williams. And he just moved him out of the way. And that puts Louisville in the bonus with still almost 10 minutes left to go in the second half. Really good job by Malik Williams to stay active and not allow himself to be blocked out by Jay Heath. If he just stands there, then Heath is able to block him out. But Williams keeps moving. And as a result, he picks up a foul. Missed the free throw, but it was a nice job to get to the line. He hit it strip, dives for it. Derek Thornton. And rebounded by Williams. Hard to get it over Williams. 6-11. Fresh Kimball finds Wara. A rare miss for the ACC preseason player of the year, Jordan Wara. Coming into this game, shooting 52% from three-point range over the course of his last seven games. And tonight, now 7 of 11 from deep.
Derek Thornton. Foot was on the line. That's just a two-pointer. But that's a big basket. You have the feeling that Louisville has seized control of this game. But Boston College is only down by seven. A couple of stops, a couple of baskets. We're right back in the soup again. The Cardinals were threatening to run away with it, leading by 11 at one point. Jordan Wara on the step back. That's really good defense. Thornton driving. It's a really nice job by Boston College to get the ball up the court quickly before Louisville can set the defense. And Thornton takes advantage. You know, he goes right by Thornton. Or he goes right by Sutton, excuse me. Because Sutton didn't have his feet set. Derek Thornton had a scintillating start to this game. Team's leading scorer, averaging 12 and a half per game this season, but he's already ex exceeded that. 16 points now on the night. Four of five from the free throw line as well. One of two players in double figures for Boston College. Jay Heath also has 16 points. And now Thornton coming to the bench. It's not a bad game from your starting backcourt. It's pretty solid. 17 and 16 points now, respectively, for Thornton and Heath. And they really needed it because their big guys got in foul trouble early. And here, BC trying to apply some pressure. And Mitchell's just so smart. Dwayne Sutton. And a late whistle, but a foul will send Sutton to the line. And for Stefan Mitchell, it's personal number three. Well, Mitchell is trying to defend him, and he just hits him with the body right there. That's a nice job by Sutton to sense that he has an advantage. Mitchell was trying to trap and then react back to Sutton, and he just didn't get there in time. And Sutton now four of seven from the free throw line here this evening. Well, next Saturday at noon Eastern, We've got the Sunshine State rivalry with Miami facing fifth-ranked Florida State. The Seminoles have won four straight against the Hurricanes, including a win earlier this season in overtime down in South Florida. So just north of eight minutes left to go, second half. It's a seven-point game. Louisville has been very aggressive in the second half, pushing that ball inside putting Boston College in fouling situations. And now, Louisville goes back to that zone where they had some success early in this half. And that's one of the things they did is they stole the ball out of the zone. And an early steal out of the zone here, allowing Johnson to get into the paint. Turn. And then Mitchell is fouled by Enoch on the rebound. With now just under eight to play, and Louisville holding on to the seven-point lead here on the wins over Duke, Miami, Florida State, and Virginia. Trying to add Louisville to the list, but they've got some work to do. And Louisville now back in that zone. We mentioned they had great success with this zone earlier in the half. Why do you think they went to the man-to-man? -man? Well, because I think they got upset with Boston College getting a couple of offensive rebounds against the zone. But this zone has been very effective at limiting Boston College's ability to drive the ball into the lane. Stephen Enoch, meantime, picking up his third personal foul. It's now three Louisville players with three fouls. Williams, Kimball, and Enoch. C.J. Felder, though, on the free throw miss. Now Boston College, they do in ACC play, they're coming into the game, they're only shooting 58% from the line. It's hard to beat a top 10 team when you're shooting poorly from the free throw line. Yeah, this is a Boston College team for the season, only shooting in the 60s in terms of free throw percentage. They've never been a good free throw shooting team at all this year. Shot clock at five for the Cardinals. David Johnson elevates. Sutton the rebound. That's their ninth offensive rebound in this half alone. The shooting has tailed off, but they've really done a nice job getting second opportunity. Jordan Wara against Jared Hamilton, spinning him down low. 
and he draws the contact for the foul. Boy, there is guys going, falling down everywhere. War, of course, is more than just a three-point shooter. Hamilton jumps out on him, but War goes right by. And you got to get out on it. Ah, what's Sutton doing rolling around the ground there? He's all contact. over the place. He, he can't is. help himself. <laughs> Jordan War up. Now matching his career high that was achieved against this Boston College team last year. Well, and he's an outstanding free throw shooter who gets to the line. Thirty-three points. Four of five from the free throw line, seven of twelve from downtown, and eleven of seventeen from the field overall. BC just having a tough time getting it inside this zone. Jarius Hamilton on the turnaround. That's what they've been trying to do, and that's the first time they've been able to get it in there without a turnover. Now into double figures, Hamilton with 10. Third Boston College player in the double digits here tonight. Looking for stops now if you're BC. Four up against Jarius Hamilton, who fouls him there. And for Jarius Hamilton, that is personal foul number four. And I'll tell you what, when you're trying to get stops down the stretch of a game and your opponent has a guy like Jordan Wara, it is almost impossible because if he doesn't score from the field, he's going to be able to get to the line and hurt you there. Jarius Hamilton, the first player in the game with four personals. And we've got our next women's basketball doubleheader for you tomorrow at 6 Eastern as Miami plays host to Georgia Tech and then it's Virginia Tech facing Syracuse on the road at the Carrier Dome. Both games here on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. Jordan Warham continues to fill it up. And again, right in front of Danny Ainge of the Boston Celtics. But it's not like this is a revelation to Danny Ainge. No, Jeez. but he's seen it up close and personal here in the front row as Jay Heath misses on the three. And hey, they got games coming up tomorrow against Golden State, Saturday against a tough 76ers team, so. Boy, oh boy, with Jason Tatum still questionable, the Celtics could use some scoring like Wara provides. The lead is nine, under BC six to go. BC needs to get some turnovers and easy baskets. Jared Hamilton pulls up over Ryan McMahon. I think that's a good shot. You know, he missed it, but you've got to get the ball down the court before that zone can get set. And that jump shot in transition is likely to be the best opportunity you're going to get. He just didn't convert. This is Ryan McMahon finding an open Sam Williamson. And he jars it from three. Williamson, his first field goal of the night. In the last game against Clemson, had 14 points off the bench. Best game of the season for him. And head coach Chris Mack said it was a long time coming. Well, Williamson is a guy, you know, that's only his eighth three-point attempt in ACC play, but he's made six of them. Ryan McMahon hits his first three. And a timeout taken by Boston College. Largest lead of the night. There is some firepower there, isn't there? You know, you forget about McMahon. But you can't leave him alone, particularly in transition. Danny Age is going to beat the traffic. Yeah, he says, I got it. <laughs> I, I saw what I needed to see. I get the point. <laughs> boy, oh boy. Led by Jordan Wara, this has been some kind of offensive firework show. An onslaught on the road by the Cardinals. 35 points, a new career high for Jordan Wara. And this Louisville team has six players who are close to or above 40% from three-point range. So it's not just Wara. They have so many different weapons that can hurt you offensively. And Wara is more than just a three-point shooter. He's also got seven rebounds in this game. He's gotten to the free throw line and converted. 
and he has done a nice job on the defensive end. And that's been one of his liabilities coming into the season. And the NBA scouts said they wanted to see him get better defensively, also take better care of the ball, not turn it over as much. And Jordan Wara will be playing at the Olympic Games later on this summer for Nigeria, and a team coached by his father. Well, you know, it's interesting that you mentioned Wara and turnovers. Let's talk about Louisville turnovers. They had 10 turnovers in the first half. They have three in this half. What do you think Chris Mack said to him in the locker room? Whatever it was, he probably said it very loudly. <laughs> well, Chris Mack knows what he's doing over there, and he knows that this team has still has a lot of room for growth and that this is a tough place for them to play. They lost coming in here last year. He knew this was not going to be an easy game. Trying to extend their winning streak to seven in a row, which would be their longest ever since joining the ACC. Hamilton gets fouled trying to split defenders. That is Jared Hamilton that time. Again, it's tough to do that dribble penetration against the zone. Interestingly, Louisville now has the longest winning streak in the ACC. Uh, the two teams with the longest winning streaks, Florida State and Syracuse, both lost last night. Now Louisville, a chance to move up in the national rankings, coming in number six in the nation this week. And the team just ahead of them, number five, Florida State, losing on the road at Virginia last night. Of course, Florida State with a decisive win against Louisville when they met at the Yum Center a short time ago. That Florida State team is a good team. Yeah, they are. Louisville has not lost since those back-to-back -back defeats right around the first of the year to both Florida State and Kentucky. It was right after those two losses that this winning streak started. Well, that Kentucky game was a game that if Louisville makes free throws, they probably win that game. But the Florida State game, they basically got overwhelmed. And the only other loss to a Texas Tech team in New York where Louisville just did not play well in any facet of the game. And one of their worst games of the entire season. But as we have seen tonight, when they are on, they are as comprehensive and as devastating a team as you'll see. Now look at this. Jordan Wara. The numbers tell quite a mighty tail. Four minutes left to go, and Louisville in command. Eighty-one sixty. That last one, their opponent field goal percentage. Obviously, a very good defensive team, but it was their offense that carried them, particularly in the first half. This Boston College team. Match Louisville and then some in that first half. In fact, the Eagles led most of the way in the first 20 minutes, but it was an unsustainable pace. And something they also started doing here in the second half they didn't do back in the first is turning the ball over. And they did a really nice job limiting Louisville to one shot in the first half, and they didn't do that here in the second half. But that's what makes Louisville so dangerous. They don't have to be, you know, 100% sharp offensively or 100% sharp defensively every night because the other can carry them. They're playing well on offense, and that can carry the defense, and their defense can carry them if they're struggling on offense. This is a team that has all the elements. And as the coaching staff for Louisville says, we don't have to have a guy go out and get us 20 or 25 on a given night because they're so balanced offensively. But you look at what they get tonight from Jordan Wara, 37 points. I mean, it's nice to not need it, but to get it is kind of satisfying as well. Well, they don't need it, but they have a guy who can give it to them. And that's, yep. I think that's one of the key things. If you're going to concentrate and you're going to try to take Jordan Wara away, they've got other guys who can pick up the slack. But if you don't take Jordan Wara away, he's showing you tonight exactly what he can do. And on the other end, their zone defense really made a difference too, didn't it? Well, the zone defense really made Boston College stand. The Eagles were moving very well. They were driving the ball very well. And that zone defense took, away, took those things away. Coming up on the final three minutes. Sam Williamson. He's just so smooth. 
Well, the biggest liability for him was on defense, and that's why his playing time hasn't been what he would like because he's just had lapses defensively. Head coach Chris Mack said when he first came in, he had no idea what he was doing defensively. <laughs> it's, not, it's starting to come around, but that was the big problem for him. The offense was never in question. Darius Perry off the tip and the slam. Well, and since about the five-minute mark of that first half, the Louisville, the Louisville defense has really turned it up, and this zone has helped them a, a great deal. Jarius Hamilton drains the three for Boston College. Now, they had their best defensive performance in the victory over Clemson last weekend, as Louisville was locked in and showed as much energy and intensity for 40 minutes as they have all season. But a pretty good effort here tonight, especially in the second half against BC, too. There's another block shot by Malik Williams. And a foul on Jared Hamilton on the rebound. And now time for tonight's player of the game brought to you by Zaxby's. Gee, I wonder who that might be. <laughs> Jordan Wara, his new career high, 37 points. A runaway favorite in the voting, they tell me, for tonight's Zach B's player of the game. Well, he sure put on a show, didn't he? It's a show that Chris Mack thoroughly enjoyed. Thought about going to the NBA after last season. Went right down to the deadline before making his decision to return to Louisville. Said he really agonized over it. Had a calf injury that didn't allow him to work out for NBA teams, and that contributed to his decision, but said that he was sitting in an airport when he finally made the decision right up against the deadline. And Louisville benefiting by his return. And now a team that is showing all of the tools and resources of a squad that could go deep into March. How deep can they go in your mind, Dan? This is a team that has national championship potential to me. Now, I'm not saying that I'm not predicting they will win it, but what I'm telling you is they're a team that is still developing. As good as they are right now, I think they can get better, maybe even much better. The NCAA tournament is so much about matchups and depth. And it's also, you got to get in and you got to be healthy. Yep. And, uh, you know, Louisville, with Malik, once Malik Williams came back and once David Johnson came back, they're finally healthy. And I think they have to stay that way. A minute left to go here. But this is a, this is a really good team. So many times you get in the NCAA tournament and if a team's plan A isn't working, a lot of times they'll panic or they don't have a another option to go to but Louisville has that depth they have that balance they have the versatility and they have the experience too with five fifth-year seniors on this squad players who have been through so much now the fans here want BC to get to 70 because they have a promotion where if you get to 70 the people here get free tacos <laughs> hey so that's why you hear They'll the crowd do anything like this. for free tacos. But Louisville's going to hang on to the ball. So not only is BC going to lose the game, the fans are going to lose their tacos. There's going to be some upset fans here at the Conti Forum. Give the people their tacos, I say. They're this close. Really impressive, impressive win by Louisville. 86 to 69 is the final. The first time they've won.